Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 3. We will start out by doing small adjustments to the town, moving a couple garbage collection places, adding a road here and there, replacing one of the football fields with something else, etc. We will also add some switches to the high voltage line, so we can use them to deal with future expansions. But most importantly, we will get started on laying out the railroad network. Nothing big or fancy, just the main line going from the border outpost, all the way down to the intersection leading into town. The only side branch we will deal with today will be the grain silo, but other than that, we will leave the others for later. And then at the end, we will do a couple minutes of fast forwarding, and watch the road network in town get built, which we will manage to get done almost entirely. Before we get started, if this is not your first video from this channel, you already know what to expect. If you want to be kept up to date, please consider subscribing, and if you like what you see, leaving a like will also help letting me know what to focus on. But enough talking, let's get into it. Let's start by deleting these poplar trees. Once they grow up, they would just block the view to the statue, so they need to go. Next, let's move the garbage collection point near the houses. They would do just fine in their current position, but they are not symmetrical, so we can do better. I think we can sacrifice the center footpath for this. Which will also allow us to place some trees in there. Let's not forget about the football field. As I've said in the last episode, I want to make this little sports area a bit more diverse, so we can place a tennis court, and a volleyball field in its place. And they are exactly the same size. Couldn't have been any better if I tried. To break up the monotony of the grid pattern, we can also place a small road here. And thanks to the fact that we are using the grid to space out the roads perfectly, we can just use it to perfectly align the footpaths too. If the footpath stop right where the road starts to curve, we can just rely on the game to take care of it for us, resulting in a perfectly parallel road and footpath. I think we can also add another grid breaking street behind the technical services, as a continuation of the one we just placed. To be able to monitor which construction sites are active, we can add the current offices into a group, and just see which sites are green. How about we deal with the town railroad station next? I completely forgot to add it in the last episode, so it's time to remedy the situation. We wanted to finish this street anyways, so might as well place it here.
I also decided to extend the track just a tiny bit after the station. Without this, we would just get an abrupt end to the tracks, but this way, we get buffer stops at the end. Now, let's deal with this street at last. Since we want this to break up the grid a little, we should try to add in some angles whenever we can. The technical services make this a bit awkward, but nothing we cannot handle. I would really like to avoid having to redraw the main road if I can, so we will just have to make peace with not having a fully accessible crossing there. The technical services are in the way again, but if we can make peace with having a smaller than usual gap between the street and the footpath, then we can squeeze it in. I guess we can just do this. It will work just fine. Okay, we can leave the town alone for now. How about we deal with the high voltage switches next? For that, we will need to demolish a couple transmission towers, and it's the perfect excuse to introduce another new mechanic in action, the demolition system. For that, we need an office, which is very similar to the construction office, only it does the exact opposite. I think we only really need one for now, since we are not doing anything drastic. We just tell it to take the demolition rubbish to the customs house, and be done with it. We will deal with proper reprocessing and collection later. In terms of vehicles, we just need a bus, so we can take workers to the demolition site, an excavator to speed things up, and a waste collection truck, to take the resulting rubbish away. We are being pretty indiscriminate right now, so that's all we are doing. Once we are more established, we can worry about collecting and sorting out our waste, but it's far from important right now. Next, how about we add a gas station to the town? We better do it now while we can get rid of stuff without having to use the demo office. After things are built, we need to dismantle them, which takes time. Also, I've been worried if the fire station is close enough to the bus stop we placed near the food factory in the last episode, so let's check on it. And we got lucky, it's in range. We can deal with staffing the fire engines from there. And it seems the bus already took a couple foreigners to take down the power pylons. Dismantling is just the first step, we also need to clear away the rubbish, so that's what will happen next. It seems that the excavator went away to refuel. Since we don't have the town gas station built yet, we can just add a temporary free one, so local vehicles can refuel a bit faster. We just need to sort out the fuel deliveries, and it's good to go. Alright. The pylons are fully dismantled, and the waste truck is busy hauling the rubbish. It will take a little while, and I suppose I could just buy a second one to speed things up, but hey, we can just fast forward if necessary. This is less expensive.
And that's it. We can place the high voltage switch now. Oh, right. Almost forgot something very important. We really don't want to automatically buy citizens as soon as the apartments are built. We want to make sure everything is ready to receive them, so we should turn off the option in the buildings. And to avoid having to do this in the future, we can also turn this off for all future apartments by disabling the option in the lower right, while we have an apartment building selected in the build menu. With that out of the way, how about we get started on the rail network next? Don't expect anything fancy, we will just build a simple mainline between the border and the town. As usual, we will build overpasses to avoid level crossings on busy roads. After adding some guard roads next to the permanent one, we can start raising the ground. Since the central road is protected, we can get as close with the leveling tool as we can and not end up creating ugly clipping on that road in the process. And to create a perfectly level bridge, we can just start leveling on the finished mound, whip the cursor over to the other side, and it will automatically create the same height hill. Okay, that should be plenty enough for what we need. Let's test if it's high enough. And it is. Perfect. The gap between the hills is much wider than we are used to in this game, but I would like to avoid creating those bumpy clipping issues we've been suffering from in previous series. Let's create the first ramp next. We just need to create a mainline section a good distance away from the elevated bridges, and we can start creating the ramp itself. We will use that proximity snapping method we've been using for a while now. Instead of connecting the two tracks directly, we will first use the snapping to create the ramps next to the final tracks. And only place the final ones when we are confident that everything is nice and smooth. Not bad. But, we are not done yet. We will place some guardrails next, and use the leveling tool to create a proper embankment, without digging the ground from under the final rail tracks we want to keep around. Also, the EDK300 just got released. That's great news. Of course, we will need to use the smaller track layer to get started, but once we reach the border with it, we can replace it with the much beefier EDK model. Okay, we can remove the guard rails at this point. This ramp is finished. Next, we need to go over the river, so we can do the exact same thing, only we will create a ramp between the bridges instead. That's it. Sure, it's a bit fiddly, 
but that's the price we need to pay to make it look somewhat presentable. Unfortunately, adding those guard rails does end up creating this ugly grass clipping situation, but we can just deal with it by the usual method with the texture tools. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. I think we could get away with a level crossing on that road going to the farms, but then we would need to create a steep ramp to get over the main highway, so we might as well create two overpasses, since we have the room here. But, to make sure we have a clear path, some things need to move. One of those things is the current construction setup. To move it, we will need to empty one out by sending everything to the road depot, move that office, and then send over the vehicles from another, emptying that one out, so we can move it too. That's the basic idea. We just need to repeat the process six times, and then send the vehicles from the depot back into the last office. And I suppose this is a good time to talk about one of the difficulty options I have turned off right now. It has come to my attention, that the YouTuber Charlie Pryor managed to find the nighttime brightness values in the INI files of the game, so we can increase the ambient lighting during night. Which means, I think we can enable the day-night cycle in the next episode. The biggest hurdle has always been the visibility with that setting, so if we can increase it enough, we should be able to play with it on, from the next episode forward. I will try to remember to include a link to his video which contains the information you would need to make it work, but if I forget to add it to the description, please let me know in the comments, so I can fix it. Anyways, I managed to ramble long enough to finish moving the construction offices. We just need to move the gas station over, and we can get rid of the remaining roads. I didn't want to waste any of the fuel, so I told one of the tankers to move it for us to the new one. Once it's empty, we can demolish it, then tell the truck to go back to the distribution office, and the path for our railroad mainline is clear. So, as I've said, I think it would be best if we built two overpasses here. I am not confident that we have the space needed for the ramp after the road, so we should bring it up before. Okay, the height is good enough, we just need to delete the guard roads. This time, instead of making the embankment narrower, we will just smooth things out, this is a rural place, so I think it's more fitting. The ramp is a bit more steep than I would like, but I think it's still acceptable. I think the power pylons are in the way, so I wanted to demolish a small section to make room, but accidentally ended up deleting the whole line. Oh well, we are not in a hurry, we are not using power near the town just yet, so we are fine, it will just take a bit longer. Now 
This overpass will have to be at an angle, so we need to build up the hills accordingly. And it's not high enough yet, so we need to raise them a bit more. Okay, the height is good now. This time, we won't be building a ramp, but an embankment between the bridges. and we are in the final stretch. We just need to hook that bridge up to the tracks near the customs house, and we are done. Okay. The tracks are not as cooperative on this section, so we will need to do some of the ramp by the seat of our pants. And you know what? I think it looks quite alright. With the main line more or less laid out, we should deal with the farm connection next. I already know that we will never ever going to export crops since it would barely be worth the power needed to move it, so we won't bother with building a switch going toward the customs house. Also, it's a bit weird how there is a small pillar already built on the bridges, even though they are at 0%. There is a bit of a sudden drop on that ramp, so let's try again. I think I can accept that. To pass the time, let's get rid of these patches of grass around the tracks. Of course, we are being very careful not to actually draw any of the textures. I have no idea if the bug we encountered in the last series is fixed or not, so let's not tempt fate. And I think we are pretty much done with playing with the tracks for now. We can deal with the different branch connections later, especially since the town is not ready yet. We will need to add a rail construction office to it, so I would like to have everything ready before we hook it up to the main line. Since the actual demolition on the power pylons is done, let's speed up the transportation, so we can deal with a new line. It will be very similar to the old one, but it will take a slightly different path.
And you know what? We might as well add in a second high voltage switch, since we have the opportunity to do so. As it turns out, that little misclick wasn't so bad in the end. We still have some time left, but not enough to get started on anything big, so let's just plant some trees. To run down the clock until the end of the episode, how about we do a bit of a time lapse, and watch the roads and footpaths in town get built. And here we have another symptom of the fast forwarding feature. The buses got stuck for absolutely no reason at all. Nice. The train station is done.
and I think this is pretty much all we have time for. Sorry about the lack of commentary at the end there, but I really cannot add anything to the vehicles running around like ants. Anyways, I think in the next episode we will try to concentrate on finishing the buildings in town, and maybe even upgrade some of the more important roads to asphalt, so we don't need to disrupt traffic too much later. I think we can get away with just doing the main street until the bus station, some of the services that cannot do without a road access for deliveries and the emergency vehicles, and leave the rest for later. As long as the ambulances, police cars, and the garbage trucks can access the footpaths, we should be golden. The only ones that cannot do without a proper road are the buses. As long as those roads are fully upgraded, the rest can be dealt with without much disruption. At least I hope so. Anyways, if you haven't done it already, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, and leaving a like would also let me know that this video was worth making. If you feel that it was good enough, and you can afford it, please consider going to my Ko-fi page, which you can find in the description, and donate an amount that you feel is appropriate. And if you did like what you've seen, there should be links to some of my other videos and playlists on the screen. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.